Welcome back to the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I've got a guest today that I I met at a networking event. So we were, uh, were chatting. I just gravitated to each other, had an epic conversation. And uh, I was listening to some of his story and just the value that he was sharing and the way he was speaking. I was like, holy shit, let's jump on a podcast. And two weeks later, here we are. Jared Lemming wasn't dealt the best cards growing up, was homeless for a period of time, struggled with mental health issues, and a huge achievement, arguably the biggest one, is to turn his life around from a drug and alcohol abuse to entrepreneurship, being happy, and being into the self-development lifestyle. His main focus right now is that he's excited to grow into a mentor and teach what he's learned along the way and help people become the best version of them, playing into the entrepreneurial mindset and skills. Jared, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. That was a, that was a, some introduction. Man. I really appreciated that. That's great. Man, I, I look forward to connecting, man. It was, um, yeah, we literally connected about, oh, how long ago was that? Three weeks? Three or four weeks? About three weeks ago. Yeah, I think. Yeah. And uh, man, we, um, I, I, um, we, well, we might t- touch on this as well in th- through the, uh, through the, through the, uh, through this conversation, but man, something I struggled with is networking. It, it's with social settings. I get really anxious and I go to things like that. So yeah. um, we, we gravitated to each other. We're having epic chats. We we're just literally pitching and catching. I was like, fuck, I love connecting with people where you can pitch and catch, where you can ask each other questions, throw it back and just have really, I guess, stimulating conversations. So uh, man, I look forward to having a great chat with you today, man. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Like you said, when we first when we first met, we could have just pressed record then and there and yeah, started podcast <laughs> right then. We got pretty deep in that conversation, so yeah, yeah, excited for this one. I forgot about that. I was like, yeah, we should have just put out a put out a mic then and there, brother. Can you share for me personally your story? I know I obviously heard glimpses of it, and obviously I just introduced you just then. But could you go just share your story? I guess where you come through, go as deep as you want to, in whatever details you want to. Of I guess who you are, where you've come from to who you are today, to what it is that you're doing today. Mm. Great. So pretty much, I mean, for me, like you said, wasn't dealt the best deck of cards um, growing up. I had uh, the life of a really uh, separate family. It, was, uh, it wasn't the straight line kind of everything was, you had a path and you knew which way you were going with it. You had a, I didn't have supportive parents. Um, I suffered a lot of issues there. So Pretty much for me, I was born in Sydney. Um, I lived there for not even six months before my mum uh, chucked me in a car and drove me all the way to Coffs Harbour. Um, the reason behind that is my mum and her past wasn't usually wasn't really the best either. So she suffered through drug abuse, violence. Was um, in the scene of like uh, when the drug scene in Sydney, and the party scene, Kings Cross, and everything was a really big thing. So it wasn't safe for me to be in Sydney. So she drove us up to Coffs Harbour to kind of escape that lifestyle. And then pretty much it was her the whole time throughout my life. I didn't know my real dad. Um, I had my mum raising me all by herself, working multiple jobs, wasn't really home much, was still battling through that, that drug and addiction as well, which I wasn't aware of at the time. So that happened pretty much all through my life. My mum found a partner when I was, 10 then she suffered more domestic violence through that so as you're seeing as i'm going through life i'm I'm getting a lot of um not getting that nurture environment suffered a lot of abuse and things like that through that phase when i became 13 i then started becoming more independent for myself probably a little bit young of an age to kind of have to find your own two feet but started working a lot, working two jobs, was a dishy, was dropping letters into mailboxes for things, trying to just find ways to make money, ways to get out of the house, ways to not be home. So from there at 13, I was like, I can't live at home. Uh, my, my, my mom and I would fight. She'd be in that domestic relationship. It wasn't safe for me to be there. And from there on in, I pretty much hopped around from house to house. And luckily I did have a lot of mates and things like that where I would stay with their friends and family and and what, like, it was good that way, right? Because they were very warming and I still got that nurtured experience from their parents. But I would always feel like I would overstay my welcome. And sometimes there wasn't people's places I could stay at. And so I would go stay on the beach or I would go and stay at at a shelter or under a bridge or just somewhere where I felt safe. So I won't go and say that I was homeless but growing up there were nights and periods of times where I just wouldn't I just felt like I was a burden on society 
I just felt that like I was a burden to everyone else and I just kind of had to be alone. So that led me to, to spending some nights in, uh, on the beaches and, and I'm um, in some pretty uncomfortable situations. And then from there, pretty much from 13, it was on and off. I'd eventually go home. Sometimes I wouldn't go home. And then, um, mum, I'd go home for three months and then mum and I would just end up fighting again and get abusive. And then I'd have to find myself back out in the street again. Um, and then unfortunately, unfortunately the way I grew up was, it was just her. I didn't have a dad to rely on at the time. I didn't have any other, uh, family in her, her part of the family. It was purely just her. So I, I really lacked that nurture environment or guidance on what to do. And look, hats off to my mom now, like looking back in hindsight, I definitely know that she did the best she could. And that's all that you can hope for. Right. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the best that she could do wasn't, wasn't the greatest, but to her, she was trying her best in hindsight. So looking back at that, I am grateful for it. But then as I got older, got into that 16 year old stage, high school influenced by friends and so forth, I started falling into that party scene and whatnot. And the sad part about this is take a step back before the party scene is I was really big in footy. Like I, I was playing rugby league a lot. I grew to it. I trained every day. I played every day. I took a competitive. It was like my savior mm. in a sense of it was everything to me. So did that. But unfortunately, then I started hanging out with friends and they weren't bad friends. It was just like these people in my life at the time weren't bad people at all. But the environment that I started hanging around was let's go to parties. Let's, let's go drink. Let's go do this. And I was only 16 at the time. I didn't have any parents to tell me otherwise. It was kind of like, just go and do it. Um, and then really it just, it took a spiral. It just became drinking every weekend. And as you're young, right? Like you drink young, have fun, make experience, but it got beyond that. It was like, yeah, you're having fun, but you're doing stuff that just was silly. And you would, you know, disrespecting other people. You didn't have respect for anyone else. You were just like partying, drinking, and then the drugs got involved. And then it was like, you know, just abusing it. Like, it was like, how many of these can we do this weekend? And how much can we do this? And like really just pushing limits that didn't need to be pushed. And I think that really put a hold on my life next to, you know, from about 16 to 20, that really put a hold on my life because that's all my life was based on. Um, and it led to a, a spiral of mental health, depression, sadness, um, all that kind of stuff. Right. And then and what I did was I found myself, um, in real estate. So I found myself in real estate, got myself a, a good job, threw myself at that, at, always wanted to do business. So I was really excited about being in this field. And then that was kind of my escape away from that. Um, and I had a better group of people around me at the time as well. So um, I had my partner at the time encouraged me to stop doing the things that I was doing, got me out of that got a different friend group, left the friends that I was around and then worked in real estate. And then I thought, okay, I want more. I like this. This is good. And then I moved to the Gold Coast, continued at real estate, continued at real estate, got involved in groups, networked, like you said, got on this journey of self-development and growth and then pretty much led to where I am today, where I've done the work inside, which I'll continue to do forever because I believe you need to. But I'm at the point now where I would, I've seen so many other hurt people along this journey and it sucks, right? Because getting out of it, it's not easy. And if you don't try, you probably won't ever get out of it. And happiness isn't easy. Otherwise everyone would do it. And unless you want to wake up every day and make the decision to go and put in the work to be happy, you won't do it. Mm. So I want to be able to help people get from, you know, where I was or wherever they are in their life to the best version of themselves. Cause I truly believe that, everyone's main goal in life is to be the best version of themselves. What that is for everyone else though, may be different. Of course, man. What a story yeah. that's um, man and credit to you, bro. That's uh, I've heard some, some amazing stories and amazing is obviously subjective, but everyone's got it, got a got a story to share and man to be able to battle and overcome the adversity that's been thrown your way, man is, is, is remarkable. And I love what you said that you want to be able to help others come. I, I, I guess, get through the dark night of the soul and come out the other side for a better, better, better phrase. Um, I guess to kick that off from the top, how is it that, what is it that you did or what were 
because I, I believe there's moments and times where you can go left or right, where you can go this, I didn't have a, I didn't have the father figure that I wanted. And that's going to be the reason why I turn out. It's like, there's, um, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but it's that story where it's like two brothers or two twins and their dad was an alcoholic and a drug abuser. And then they get interviewed 20 years later, one super successful and one's addicted to drugs. And they get asked, why did you turn out the way you were? And it says, well, with my dad, I had no choice. And that was the same yeah. answer for both of them. So it really just sort of stems that question to you. Like, what is it that, what were the main maybe moments in time or decisions that you made to allow you to not go down the road that could have easily been gone down, being in that environment and having those challenges thrown at you? It could have been really easy for you to play that victim card and to grab onto that that environment and become that environment. So yeah, I kind of a long question, but what is it that, what were the main differences for your decisions that you made that's allowed you to get to a point, man, when you're, you're networking, you're self-developing, you're, you're about to go travel in the world from what we spoke about um, when yeah. we caught up. So what was a, what, yeah, what were some of those key decisions and moments that allowed you to go from A to B? Yeah, look, that's a really good question. And I think you're definitely right. Like you can go either way, right? Like I think one of the things, and my mom taught me this was that, every decision that you make has a consequence good and bad every single thing you do is a decision so i think for me that's always been on the front of my mind with every decision i make it's like if i do this what will happen if i do that i do that so i've always been big on decisions and realizing the consequences of what can come from them good or bad so i've always been aware of that but i think growing up also being in a competitive sport and everything like that it gave me that drive to just want to be good like it wanted me to be better and like i mentioned earlier everyone wants to be better but they only want to be the best version of themselves what they know is the best version so at that current time in my life the best version of myself was probably partying and having fun and that was probably the right scene or so forth do you know what i mean yeah so whereas now the best version of me is a different version right so the decisions i was making were reflecting that version of myself whereas they've changed now. I also, I think what kept me going through that whole journey was I always would say to myself, I want to be the man that I didn't have in my life. Like I wanted to create a life for my family that I didn't have because I knew how bad it was and I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. So that's always been my motivator and I've always thought that. So I think my intention was always to be good but with the emotional damage that I didn't deal with, it led me on a path of influence that I didn't need to go on. So I think I knew where I needed to be. I always knew which, what was right and what was wrong. And I needed to go this way, but I was influenced this way and I didn't have the, the support or the, anyone else to pull me to this way at the time. So I got caught off path. I always knew where I was going. I always knew that I wanted to create a life that was great for me, my friend family and it was the best possible life I could live business financial emotional I always wanted it like I always knew I needed to go this way but I think unfortunately given the lack of influence and emotional hurt and damage that never got dealt with I think I just got influenced this way so I think yeah I think just being aware has also helped me go this way so I think that's why I've ended up this way is I always deep down knew that I wanted to go this way but ended up going that way beautiful man uh I guess my question when you were just talking then is like you said, you always knew you wanted to go this way. Now I believe that everyone has a gift. Everyone has a purpose. Everyone has a calling um, for what we're here to do on our short stint on this planet. And I believe it's always, it's always trying to reveal us, reveal itself to us, but a lot of people aren't conscious of it or they're getting influenced by other things, external stimulus. How were you able to be so conscious of it at such a young age with all the, I guess, chaos around you right so all the stuff that was happening yeah how are you able to i guess listen to it i don't know if you'd use the word consciousness or intuition or awareness or meditation or journaling or i don't know what it is but you seem to despite the circumstances be able to listen to yourself and, and be quite in tune to yourself where most people who go through less than half of what you've done don't even under don't even listen or follow their gifts or follow their inspiration or follow their their calling for why they're here so yeah. how are you able to do that with all that stuff happening? I think my self-awareness back then probably wasn't as good as what it is now. I think that um, 
I just think I had a drive, like I had a hunger and I knew, I think deep down I knew what was right, but I was rebelling in its own state. I think for me, I always, I didn't want to be sad. Like I didn't, I never, ever wanted to be sad. I never wanted to be depressed. I never wanted to, to be the victim. And at times I probably played it, but, but, and look, I think, I think where it comes from is I didn't have, I did have some support from some people and I had some really caring people in my life and I was always observant. I think the one thing that I learned, especially from footy at 13 was when I started playing, I started playing leadership roles and I started playing in like ball players. I had to, I had to analyze the game yeah. all the time. And I think I took that into my, to my mind and everyday life. If you have to analyze it because it's a game of life. It's not like you don't just get put on air and you just do nothing, but like, there's things to it. Right. Like, yeah you don't get to just pick and choose what you, well, you kind of do, right? Like you kind of just need to analyze where you are. I think the quality of the questions I would ask myself all the time, just being observant. It's like understanding that the mind was a powerful thing. I was always fascinated by the mind. I was always analyzing it and observing it. And I was always an overthinker. Probably it was a bad thing. It's in sometimes being an overthinker um, because it would just drive you and spiral you into to an anxious feeling all the time and stuff. But uh, I think, yeah, being an overthinker, being an analyzer and, you know, well, this is wrong. So why don't I do this? Or this is crap. So change that. Like I always thought like that with everything I did. It's like football. It's like that play didn't work. So do this play. Like I kicked on fifth, but I should have kicked on fourth. Like just changing, like the way I always, been, always anal- analyzed it, I think mm. for me. So just reviewing, just reviewing. It's like uh, Tony Robbins uses that that overused analogy. It's like you're running mm. east looking for a sunset. Like you're never going to yeah. get there. So you need to review where you're going. Is this the results you're wanting to achieve? No, then change your approach. Change your approach. Exactly. Change I was just approach. curious. I was just curious for the ring. I was like, well, this sucks. And like, I would still do it repetitively until I, like it was rough and it was on and off till I was like 20 until I started becoming more self-aware mature on it, right? But I was trying and I look back at it now and go, I was analyzing it then. I was trying to get out of it. But again, young, no experience was falling into the wrong influence. But I think, yeah, analyzing and reviewing is definitely that. Well, where's a starting point where say someone right now is listening to this and like, I want to get my life together. I resonate with what you're saying. I'm, I'm not, I haven't been dealt the best deck of cards and I want to start to move towards the direction that you're moving towards and what you're doing right now. What are some things that people can do, whether it's a book or a podcast, obviously they listen to a podcast right now. What's something that they can do, or maybe you've done that really shifted the needle and actually made a fair bit of progress with your journey. Yeah. A few things. Um, this is a big one. It's a bit hard. Yeah. I understand people kind of just do this every straight away but i moved out of my hometown i think that i was already starting to get on that path of moving forward anyway but i moved out of my hometown and moved to the gold coast and getting away from that 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 constant momentum of just doing the same stuff over and over again definitely shifted that um i reckon i was probably already a year onto the journey at that point but i think from moving up to the gold coast um it excelled that i've definitely had rapid growth since that in the last three years of well, nearly four years of being here. So getting out of your hometown is changing environments. I heard a quote once and it's something that sticks with me all the time. When a plant doesn't grow, do you blame the plant itself or do you blame the seed and the soil and everything around it? So obviously you do have to take some responsibility for yourself and, and how the way you feel and stuff. But if you stay in the same environment that you know is shit and it's negative and it's bad, you'll constantly think negative thoughts. It's show me your friends and I'll show you your future. It's a very similar aspect of that. So I think one of the biggest things for me was getting out of my hometown. Obviously, I know that not everyone has the ability to just go and do that and pack up and leave. So that's one drastic measure. The next thing was read this book because... For, for people that are listening, I uh, can't see it. What's the book? Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's a great book. Um, that really helped me understand that everything we do in a life is a habit. Like it's all habits. It's all these and you've developed so many bad ones and you really just need to get out of them and you don't see them as habits until you actually realize what they are. And then The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, um, another brilliant book. And I think it would have to be the, the, the biggest part of my growth and understanding and the, the, the fundamentals of that book has definitely helped me with my life. So uh, the, the two things there, as you can see, is reading and changing, right? 
it's not reading itself. Like I'm not telling you to go read a book. I'm not telling you it's, it's look for the help, like look mm. to be better. That's it's not like if reading, like if reading's off, if reading's not for you, don't read. Like you get caught up on all this Instagram and TikTok stuff, like 10 books you must read. And like, I believe all that, like but the, the, the purpose is that everything in life pretty much has been done by someone else. Someone else has written about it. Someone's done a podcast about it. Someone's coached about it. Something. What you're going through right now, someone else has probably already gone through it. And they've gotten through it. So find that person that's gotten through it and learn from them because that's what's going to get you through. It's like if you want to write a million, if you want to be a real estate agent, a really good one, what do you do? You go and speak to the best real estate agent and ask him what he's doing. It's the same with your mind. It's like if you, I'll use Leno Holler from Men's Medicine example and he's a big fundamental part of my growth he's someone that's very in touch with his mind and soul and helps other people and i i met him and i latched on him i said how have you gotten from your life from here to here and then just started implementing the things that he did to get where i am so it's not about reading the book that those two books in particular it's about going to find what you want your life to look like find that person that's living the life that you want or has dealt with the issue that you've dealt with and then go and figure it out, go figure it out from there. I think that's, they're the two things for me. What are some of those things for you? Like what say lean, lean all, or just, and just to sort of just um, underline what you just said, like it's not the book, it's the decision to find the fucking answer, whether it's a, a book or a podcast or a YouTube video or uh, anything. It's like the answers are out there. Modeling, turning decades into days. It, you can go find someone who's gone through your challenge and not only that, gone through it, overcome it and taught other people how to do it as well. You can save yourself 10 years of suffering and just go learn if you're open-minded and committed to do what it takes to get the resource. What were some of the things, whether it's the book, The Power of Now, Atomic Habits, Conversations of Lino, um, or obviously all the other self-development that I know you've done, what were some of the mm -hmm. key things that you do or habits that you do that have really shaped you to who you are now? Yeah. So the first thing I did, what I've learned is the quality of the questions you ask defines the quality of your life. Beautiful. So I got taught that and that wasn't, I actually don't remember who told me that, but questions, it's the most important thing because if you don't ask yourself where you want to be or where you want to go, you can't go there. Like you, you need to know where you want to be. And a question that I always ask myself always is if I, if money was limitless or if I could have the dream life, how big would I dream? If I could have any life that I want, what would my life look like? If I could feel any single way for the rest of my life, how would I feel? Questions like that really kind of nutted out for you in kind of, you can kind of formulate a plan from there. It's like, for me, I write it down all the time. Like I have it on my little notepad here. It's like, ask yourself, what do you want? Like if you could have anything right now, limitless, money wasn't an object. They were just, you could, if I told you your next choice is you can have whatever you want. And just write it down with no judgment. Because I think people write things down that will have, have judgment on them and think like, oh, it's wrong. Oh, I shouldn't think like that. Like for example, here's some of my things, like travel the world, make lots of money. Um, own a business, influence people, help people, routine, good health, good habits, freedom, to be a millionaire. Look, to be a millionaire is seen to be an arrogant, cocky person. But if you want to be that, write it down. Be it. You're, that's an outside voice, right? So by asking yourself that question, right, you can then formulate what you, you, you want your life to look like, to plan. And you'll see some of these things fall into the same category. Own a business influence people help people okay you see what i'm going with like you, you can this can create a life like you get to create your life right so by asking quality questions you can kind of figure out what your life looks like and then once you figure out what your life looks like that's when you start looking for other people who can help you get to where you want to be and some of the things that i learned along the way was so yeah quality questions is one of them the next thing is and i stay by this all the time is being present and that was in the, in, the, in the book of The Power of Now. You're not guaranteed the next moment. Like, you're just not. Like, it's once you can actually comprehend that, like, people know that. Like, oh, you could die tomorrow or you could do that. Like, 
no, actually comprehend it that I'm not guaranteed to make my next step. I'm not guaranteed that this podcast will end. I'm not guaranteed that I'll get to work today. There's so many outlining factors that just can control so many things. So like you're getting so worked up, right? I'm present right now with this. I've got other meetings today. I've got other things I need to do, but I'm 100% present because I might not even make it to those meetings. So I'm going to make the most out of this moment. So being present is the most important thing. Worry about the situation when you're there, not before it. Because if you're working yourself up, you're not, in, you're not staying present and you're getting worked up over a situation that doesn't need to be worked up about. So by being present, good saying is depression is living in the past, anxiety is living in the future and uh, happiness lies within the present. There are a few t- takeaways and then routine probably as cliche as it is you hear everyone say it, but it's, uh, it's true. I think finding a routine that works for you, it's not about wake up at five, make sure you get your breath work in, make sure you do your walk, make sure you get your 5k steps in. I don't think that, I think that's not true. I don't think you, you got to do your own routine, right? So you've got to trial and test it. There's things out there that people do try them all, do them all, find what works for you. That's what I did. Used to wake up at four thirty. Used to train and then watch the sunrise. And then I realized I was flat and for energy all day. So I was like, okay, I'm not doing that again. Started waking up at five. Started training first. Realized I really missed the sun in the morning. So then started doing the sun. Tried reading in the morning. Realized I couldn't read in the morning. Liked reading better at night. So find the habits that people do that are successful. But just because someone wakes up at five and then they go to the gym at three five thirty and then they eat breakfast at six doesn't mean you have to do it that way. Yeah. Love that. The purpose of it is just finding a routine that works for you. But the routine is meant to be things that you enjoy. I think people get caught up in trying to do a routine that's going to make them better. It's not necessarily about that. It's about doing things that you enjoy. I enjoy training. And even if I don't, I know that it's good and beneficial for me. Do you know what I mean? So, and I know the impact that it has for me throughout my day. Because back to the thing before about all your decisions have consequences, good or bad. I know that even if I don't want to go to the gym sometimes, I know that it's good for me. So I've got to do it regardless of how I feel. I know that getting the sun on my eyes in the first 10 minutes of the day is very important. As soon as I wake up, get down on the beach, sunrise, stillness, bit of breath work. I know those things work for me. So I do them and I don't complicate it. I train in the morning, I do breath work and I have a breakfast. Oh, and I have a cold shower. It's not hard. I don't have this big list. It's just that. It's no phone for the first hour. It's just really simple stuff, but that stuff, sets you up and gives your mind confidence that you're doing these routine things and actually achieving them. Mm. And I believe that happiness is expectations exceeded. So when you put yourself in an expectation and you exceed it, it sets the good playing field for the day. That's gold guys. Just listen to that back. He just gave you like 30 little nuggets just then. The cold showers, the reading. I love the point that you made. I, I experienced, um, I guess, challenges or conflict uh, oh, a couple of years ago now when I was like trying like morning routines and I'd see someone do a hundred push-ups when you wake up. So I started doing that. I was like, this is shit. <laughs> like I don't like yeah. doing it. So it's like, there's, you can justify benefits to it. It's like, it just doesn't make me feel great. And it's like some people, you got to do this, you got to meditate. You got to, and like, there's like X amount of things. It's like, well, what actually puts you in a great state? What makes you, what inspires you? What's good for you? And there's obviously like the yin and yang with like, sometimes you don't feel like training, but you know, it's good for you. You don't feel like doing some things, but you know, it does it. So there is definitely some times where you got to push past the discomfort to get what's good for you. But yeah, just mm-hmm. guys, just please listen to that back, back again. Cause I really resonate with that morning routine. Cause I'd see one successful person do it on a podcast. And I'm like, I'm going to do that now. And then I'll do it. I'm like, I feel shit. This is not good. Like I just can't be bothered. It- and, and on that as well, like it's about habit stacking. Like I used to get really caught up and get with the motivation of it. Like, oh, you'd watch a video and be like, oh, that's so cool. I'm going to do that. And then you'd go and do it for three or four days and then you wouldn't continue because it didn't resonate with you. You're just motivated at the time. But what I learned was it's not about just going copy paste of like, here's 10 things, do them all. It's like just add one. And like it's habit stacking. Because if you put too much pressure on yourself, you just won't get there. It'll be overwhelming. So if I could offer a piece of advice to anyone to start a routine is find a time that works for you. What time do you wake up now? Let's say it was seven o'clock. Okay. The next week, start at 6.30. Don't do anything else. Just wake up at 6.30. Don't go to the gym. Don't don't add all these other ones. Just start at 6.30 today. And then once you've done that for a week, maybe get it to six or wherever you want to get it. 
wherever you feel like good for you and then add the next thing and then add mm. the next thing. So, so start with waking up earlier and then maybe just go for a walk. Don't put any expectations on yourself. Just, I'm going to wake up at six and maybe I'll do it alone in the house. Or maybe I'll go for a walk or maybe I'll grab a coffee with a friend this day, whatever. The, the routine that you're focusing on right now is just waking up earlier. Wake up earlier and then, okay, sweet. You've got the hang of that. Okay, well, I want to really start training because I know I'm not really healthy right now and I know that I need to probably feel better. And I really want to go get stronger or something like that. So say, sweet, I'll wake up at six and I can add a half an hour into the gym, add half an hour to the gym. So then now you're waking up early, going to the gym and you're two weeks in. Now you're, you're waking up early and you're going to the gym. Then after another week, add another thing. Wake up early, go to the gym. Maybe you want to do a walk on the beach. So then now you've got this thing and then you realize and then get tricky with it. It's like, actually, I'd probably like walking before training. So wake up early, walk first, then train. And then if that works, that, that, that's, the, that's the pattern. Stick with it and then add the fourth thing. Well, don't add the fourth. Like if you feel like there's another thing you want to add, add another thing. But like, don't just go and go, okay, come on, do this, 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 and this. But don't hop off this podcast and then tomorrow go, I'm going to wake up at five o'clock because Jared and Lewis said, so I'm going to train and do all this and then do it for a week and then never do it again because it just doesn't work like that. And I've done, I've been a victim to that multiple times and it's just overwhelming. Beautiful, man. Uh, just one more underline on that as an example, then we'll move on. Like uh, one of my mentors that I went through a long time ago, Michael Johnston, he said, he used to be in the PT industry and you're, you're drinking a glass of water right now, which is perfect for this. He's like, you have these clients come in, I need to lose 30 kilos, I need a detox, I need a XYZ sauna, blah, blah, blah. He's like, for the first week, I want you to drink five glasses of water. He's like, what else? That's it, just do that. Just five glasses of water and then stack on, then stack it on. So just really triggered that in me. I want to shift into this, if you're okay going there, is yeah. you mentioned the word hindsight and hindsight for me, my belief of it is it's hindsight is the instant. It's, it's another word is wisdom. Wisdom is the instantaneous understanding that a crisis is a blessing. It's where you've gone through something that was painful and you didn't like it. And then the hindsight kicks in where you actually realize, holy shit, that actually shaped me and gave me strength or gave me lessons or gave me courage or gave me grit or whatever it is. I just, from your experience, like you've been through and there, I'm framing it in a way because I'd love for you to tackle it from a particular angle is because people yeah. go through things and they use that as a victim. My mom wasn't there. Mm -hmm. My dad wasn't there. I didn't have support. I didn't have this. I didn't have that. And it just becomes their story and their, their, their self limiting belief and uh, cage that they box themselves into for why they can't have the life that they want. Where if you literally find anyone who's successful everyone's had their own tribulations everyone's got more than some have more than some have less i'd just love to know from you how were you able to i know come to that that point where you don't blame your mum anymore you don't blame your, your lack of having a father figure your and all the other challenges that you shared in your story how did you get to a point where you no longer allowed that well you sound like you didn't even at all to be honest but how did you just not allow that to hold you back like so many people do? Yeah, great question. I think that a lot of people play the victim. I think that uh, I think it's a it's a trap, right? I think that a lot of people fall into it. I did definitely feel it. I definitely did play the victim. I probably skimped over that part a little bit too quickly. But yeah, I, I played the victim growing up. You know, I was like, I'm sad. I'm depressed. I'm emotional. Oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that kind of thing. A few things I liked on. Everything else, like, no, I don't want too much effort. I'm depressed, whatever. You just get to a point where you have to ask yourself, do you want to live the rest of your life like this? At some point, and I think we all have it, but just you don't have, people just don't have the urge to keep going. I had somewhat of a drive about me. Like I had the drive and I knew I wanted to be successful. Everyone knows they want something in life. It's just too big of an object for some people. It's just overwhelming. It's too far. And I just think you get to a point where you say, fuck, this sucks. Like, it sucks. Like, I'm going to be here potentially. Like, I go on about being here for the present only, right? But hypothetically, you live a healthy life. You live, men typically live to 80, whatever the, the statistic is. I've lived 13 years or I've lived 15 years like this, however long it's been for you. It's like, it fucking sucks. I was like, do I really want to live the next 80 living like this? Like, it sucks. Like, there's everyone that's happy. There's everyone that's living their best life. It's like, if they can have it, why can't I? It's like, you've kind of just got to look yourself in the mirror and go, this fucking sucks. It's, it's, there's no sugarcoating it. 
Like, like if you were to be friends with someone, do you want the, do you want to be a friend that's just moping around all day or do you want to be friends with someone who's is happy? And like, I think that's the stuff that I would say to myself. I'd be the voice in my head. I'd speak out loud to myself. I'd be like, why the fuck do you think like that? Like, just get on with it. Like, you've only got one chance. Like, you really just let yourself down. And then you just start small, I think. I just I started small and I started moving forward in that progression. But like you said, hindsight. Like, it did suck growing up. I mean, it was shit. There's no lying, lying about it. But I wouldn't change any of it you shape it i wouldn't be the person i am today and i like who i am today like i think like i know people that didn't have any struggle in their life and not everyone like some people get through life great and they don't have struggle and they're still great people i think the people that struggle the most are the are the people that you know have better characters have better conversations with you know they've, they've had more experience we always talk about having life experience you know I was always told my job that oh, I wouldn't be successful because I don't have much life experience. I never bought a house, never, never, you know, I never built a house. So I, I wouldn't experience it, right? But I've got this life experience of life. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like, yeah, hindsight's beautiful. Like you look back at it, you wouldn't change a thing. It, just, it, is, it is what it is. But getting out of that mindset is just, you've got to make the decision. You can't get it from anywhere else. Like you, I had heaps of people try and help me all the time. You ever try and help someone that's really, obviously you do, right? You try and help someone, that, but they reach out to you, right? Like they want, they're looking for help, yeah? If you just go to someone and say, you're looking to be upset, let me help you. Like you kind of put advice on them. They're never going to take it. They're never going to stick with it. It's never going to hit with them. It's just going to motivate them for a little bit and then they're going to fall off. Because until they make the decision to be better or to stop being the victim or anything like that, it, they won't get better. And I think that you just got to know that you've got one life and it sucks and you've got to do it the right way. Like you've got to, you've got to go about it. Like you've got to grab it by the balls and just go. Like it's just as simple as that. Like I know it's so simple to say, but I've been there. Like mm. look yourself in the mirror and just tell yourself, like ask yourself that question. If I could have the life I wanted, how would it look? Because everyone knows what they want their life to look like. They're just too scared to say it. They're too scared to tell themselves because then they put like, they put it out there. It's a reality. It's like, oh, I want this. Oh, but I'm, and you don't go for it. So then you feel like the loser. Like you feel like you're not achieving it. You feel like it's too big of a task or you're too scared to say it because you think people are going to think you're stupid or, or as if you get that or as if you want that. I think you're just too scared. You know what you want. You know, you don't want to play the victim. Like, you know, you don't. Like no one wants to do that. And I think you just got to be real with yourself. You just got to tell yourself you don't want it powerful powerful man guys re-listen to this whole podcast has been nothing but gold here beautiful stuff man what's next for you so you've uh you've come through uh i guess a challenge in upbringing but it shaped you into the man that you are today you've worked on yourself you're investing into yourself you're learning you're uh you've got a you're clear on what it is that you want and the gift that you want to give back to the world what's next for you now yeah well like, like we touched on earlier, obviously being on this self-development journey for so long now and being shaped into the person I am today, I think I've gotten to a point now where I'd like to create a space for people to be able to, to be better themselves. Now, I know that one of the things that I struggled with growing up was where to start. I think that was, I was lucky. I was, I was motivated, right? Like I, I had that slight bit of motivation and drive still, but I know a lot of people out there don't. And I know a lot of people get caught up and especially in today's age with social media and and TikTok and labels and, and all this kind of stuff. It's a lot harder now because there's so much more influence out there and comparison is the thief of joy. So I feel like the mental issues and the things that people face are a lot harder now. It's a lot more overwhelming. Um, and I know for me, it was like, where do I start? So I want to create a platform where we can give that opportunity to people. You know, how can we get them to where they want to be? How can we help them be better for themselves? Because by creating stronger men stronger females we create a better society for the people around us so for me the next couple of years is just about continuing to grow myself and uh try and uh formulate a way to help other people be the better versions of themselves powerful man watch this space ladies and gentlemen uh jared if someone wants to connect with you reach out to you and just thank you or in whatever they want to do how can they find yeah. you what's the best way to find you 
just straight on Instagram. It's just Jared Lemming, uh, J A W R A R D Lemming. Easy as that. Guys, Jared, thank you for being on here today, man. This has been a powerful conversation. I look forward to watching your journey now, man. It's uh, I like uh, following people that are on, on this planet who are clear on their mission and who are actually taking action towards it, man. And you certainly are that person. So brother, thank you for your time. For the, uh, thank for you so much. All the listeners that are here, please like, subscribe, comment, reach out to Jared, send him a message. And guys, send this with, uh, share this with a friend. If you've got a value from this, if, this, if something's hit home and there's been half a dozen plus gold nuggets here today about how to not use your past excuses, how to grow, how to work on yourself, habits that you can do every single day, share it with a friend. Give this gift to someone else and share Jared's story and his, uh, his value to someone else. And uh, guys, thank you so much. Jared, thank you one more time for being on the podcast today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here.